um, which is what I'm going to be talking to you about today. So I've just put together a bit of a presentation to explain exactly what it is, exactly what it is that we do. And um, please feel free to just put your hand up with any questions at any point throughout this. And I think there's a microphone around somewhere so we can, it's just down there, perfect. So we can figure out um, how to make all of that work. Um, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna explain a little bit about the, um, the, the background of the Nordic playlist. So this is, this is who I work for. I work for the Nordic Music Export, which is owned by the five companies that you can see underneath. So Music Export Denmark, the Iceland Music uh, Export, Music Finland, Music Norway, and Export Music Sweden. And me and my colleague Anna, we basically work on all of the projects that all of the export officers want to collaborate on. So if there's anything that um, is, has a pan-Nordic vision, so it's something that we can spread around the world and we can try and promote music as a Nordic entity, then that's the kind of thing that we work on. And the Nordic playlist is one of the projects that we've developed underneath the Nomex umbrella. Um, so I don't know if any of you have managed to look at the site yet. I hope it's. I hope you've come across it in some way and um, heard about it somehow. But this is what it looks like just here. So if you go to nordicplaylist.com, then you'll land on this page right here. Um, and I'll just I'll just explain exactly what it is that we do. So you can see here we've got Nana Cherry on the home page. So what we do is we get in touch with um, a Nordic artist every week, and we ask them to pick ten of their favorite Nordic tracks. And we really encourage them to pick two from Sweden, two from Norway, two from Denmark, Iceland, Finland. If they like Faroese music as well, then they're very much encouraged to pick songs from there and to include that too. And then what we do is we program all of their track choices into different streaming services. So we're currently working with three different streaming services. We work with Deezer, Spotify, and Wimp. So if you come onto our homepage and you press play, you can instantly access all of the music that the artist curating the site that week has picked and you can listen to it all. You can scroll down and you can read an interview with each of the artists which tells you why they pick the songs, uh, how they feel about Nordic music, what they're up to. So Nano is telling us all about um, her first album in, her first solo album in 20 years that she'd released earlier this year and she's currently out touring it. So we had a really nice conversation about that. Um, but the, the kind of main idea behind the website is to encourage people to discover new Nordic artists through the recommendation of artists that they already know and that they really love. So we've worked, we've just published our 35th. We do it every Wednesday. Uh, we have a Danish band called Reptile Youth curating this week, but we've worked with artists such as Oliver Arnold, we've worked with Oland, we've had Erland Oy, we've had um, of Monsters and Men, Emiliana Torini. So we've had some of the real key music figures in the Nordic music world come on board, tell us all about their new favorite artists. And then we actively encourage all of our audience, all of the fan bases of each of the artists selected to, um, to really engage with it, to stream it, to listen to it, to share it. So that's the, that's the main section. That's what we refer to as the Nordic playlist. Um, and then you can see just underneath, we've got three other sections. So we've got the Nordic top 10 section here. But I'm going to hold off on telling you because I can't remember what the next slide is. So we'll just see what pops up there and then I'll tell you about whichever section that is. Okay, this is the pick and mix section. So this is um, a section that we use for news. We use it for um, emerging artists to put a, shine a bit of a spotlight on them. Uh, we use it for new tracks, new videos. Uh, we do lots of festival partnerships and co-branding with um, the likes of Oya Festival in Oslo, Flow Festival. We're going to be doing a lot of work at Iceland Airwaves this year as well. Um, and so we use this section just to kind of, you know, spread the word about all those different projects, where you're going to be able to find us. If you go to the pick and mix section this week, then you'll find out all about the show that we're putting on at Glass House tomorrow evening. So we've got four um, artists set to play, but I have another slide about that, so I'll tell you about that in a minute, that's fine. But this is the pick and mix section right here. Then we have what we call our top 10 section as well. So every week we have a look at the 
top sales and streaming charts in each of the Nordic countries. We eliminate the international artists and we pick out all of the Nordic artists that are in there. So this is um, last week's for Norway. So you can see that we've got people like Anders Nilsson and Sina Bose, Tova Lowe, artists like that in there. So this is a top 10 list that's not available anywhere else. It's just the specifically Nordic artists that are in there. We, we kind of, it's Nordic in any sense as well. So if the songwriter's Nordic, then we include them in the list as well. If it's a Nordic artist, obviously they're gonna be in there too. And the concept is the same as with, um, with the Nordic playlist itself. It's that you click on the play button and then you can instantly hear all of the tracks that you can read about on the screen. So we share this on all of our social networks. We send out newsletters every week. We contact the artists that we're presenting in there. And we really actively encourage people to stream it and to listen to it and to just have a really good conversation with us. So if they're hearing something that they're enjoying, then we'll let them know more about it. We'll be really active on Twitter and sort of having a conversation and making sure that they find other artists that they're really interested in too. So this is kind of very much a first step in a discovery path and then we do everything that we can to follow it up and make sure that those fans that are discovering music this way are staying really engaged and you know keeping keeping involved with the projects that we're putting in front of them. And then the final section that we have is the DJ mix section here. And so we speak to, because um, what we want to do, we, we want to spread the genres out and we want to make sure that we can work with lots of different kinds of artists. So we, we developed this DJ section in conjunction with a Danish uh, producer called Kasper Bjerke. And he, um, he came up with the whole concept that we should be allowed to produce an hour's worth of content. That content should be whatever that artist would normally present in a live set or they would normally make on a mixtape or something like that. So it needs to be an hour long, really good representative slice of whatever that Nordic artist does. Uh, then we'll do, as we do with the Nordic playlist, we'll do a really nice interview with them and we'll make sure that we can talk about whatever projects those artists have coming up or going on We'll find out about the songs that they decided to put in there. So this is a really nice one that we published recently from Prince Thomas from uh, Norway. And he, we, we just asked him to make an hour long mix of whatever he wanted. And he decided that he wanted to make a love letter to Sweden, which uh, all of my colleagues in Norway were very happy about. So they, um, it's a really lovely mix. It's hosted on SoundCloud. You can listen to it, you know, however it is, however it is that you most prefer. And then we put all of the track listing underneath as well so that you can easily find out who you're listening to. You can Google them, find out more, and um, yeah, hopefully discover something that you're going to really enjoy. So because we've published our 35th playlist, we've now had over 300 Nordic artists featured on there. It's not 350 because we've got a few people that keep cropping up. So Askia from Iceland is a very popular choice at the minute. The lovely Alice Bowman, who's playing our stage tomorrow, has been on the last three or four as well. Everybody's absolutely crazy about her at the minute. Um, so yeah, so it's not quite 350 artists because we've had a little bit of overlap. We might do some kind of chart at the end of the year to see who's been selected the most and, you know, haven't figured it out yet, but some kind of end of year special around that's going to be good. Um, we've featured more than 80 up and coming, so new artists in our pick and mix section as well. And we've had 11 DJ mixes so far. We've got a 12th DJ mix going live next week from our first Faroese DJ. So that's going to be really good fun. Um, so this is just to show you a little bit about the launch of it. So this project has been live since the 6th of January. Um, we launched it, we thought, quite quietly because we wanted to put the platform out there and just make sure that it was working and that the content that we were putting on there was engaging enough for people to really get involved with. But quite a lot of people got excited by the simplicity of the idea, um, the whole kind of recommendation, discovery through curation concept. And so we got some really exciting press in the first few weeks. So we've got some nice Guardian mentions, Politique in there, 
And then in Iceland, we were even on the news, on the television, which was fantastic. So we had Nana here from Of Monsters and Men. She was uh, one of our very early curators. And she um, had such a great time just going through the process of finding new artists um, that she decided to call up the news station about it. And then that happened, so that was great. Um, but that's just to give you an idea of kind of the momentum that this project had very early on. So there was clearly a real hunger for this very easy to use way of discovering music. So we hope that we're keeping on top of that and really, you know, getting people involved every week. And another thing that we're very active on, as I mentioned earlier, is just sharing everything on social networks and making sure that there's a conversation happening around all of the content that we have on the website. So each of the Nordic playlists that we run is online for a week. So we're pushing a whole week's worth of attention towards the one curating artist, but also to each of the artists that they've selected in their playlist. And we, um, we spend an awful lot of time during the week just making sure that the word spread as far and wide as we possibly can and that as many people are tuning in as we can encourage. Um, so it's been living as it has been now for nine months, more or less. So we're now looking into the next stages and what we're going to be doing. So we're developing a section called Magma, which is going to be our first genre-specific section. And we're going to be working in the contemporary music world. We're going to be working a lot on film soundtracks and things like that. So this is very much in development and we're not actually launching it until November. And I'm not supposed to be talking about it until mid-September, but I just thought I'd mention it because we're, it's going to be the first of many genre-specific areas because there's certain, certain things that we haven't quite managed to cover on the website and we want to make sure it's as comprehensive as we possibly can in all genres. And we feel like each genre should be treated as respectfully and as broadly as it possibly can be. So we're developing lots of, um, lots of kind of hubs to go within the Nordic playlist umbrella where we'll be able to really talk about things like that. Um, and the reason that we've got a picture of Licky Lee over here is because we are partnering up with Licky Lee to present a show here uh, that I can't say the name of it, Admiral's Palast. Okay, um, so that's going to be in November. So we're going to be partnering up with her and that's very much going to be our first, or one of our first steps into taking our online project into an offline world. So we're going to be doing a lot of work with Licky in the run-up. She's going to be doing her own playlist. She's going to be interviewing. She's going to be doing lots of promo with us around it. And then we're going to be presenting her at the venue in November. So... Um, and around that, we're going to be bringing the Nordic playlist more vibrantly into Germany than we have before. Our focus has very much been the intra-Nordic region for the launch of this. So we've been trying to get kids in Norway to listen to bands from Finland and just kind of break down any sort of neighborly barrier that might have been there and just really kind of encourage people to enjoy the music for where it's from as well as for what it is. Um, but with this Licky Lee show, we're really going to start turning our attention over here more. So we're going to be doing a lot of promotion over here. Um, hopefully a lot more live activities as well. And then we're going to be opening up the curation process too. So we're not just strictly going to have Nordic curators anymore. We're going to open up to international curators and not necessarily musicians either. We might have directors coming in there, authors, journalists. Um, we work a lot with festivals, as I mentioned earlier as well. So we always get the festival bookers to pick their favorite Nordic artists and to curate playlists that way. So that's another thing that we're going to be rolling out in Germany. So we will be back. <laughs> and I mentioned this very briefly earlier, but we've got a showcase night on at First We Take Berlin tomorrow. We've got High as a Kite headlining, who are one of our previous curators as well. So if you go to nordicplaylist.com, you'll be able to find their curated playlist on there. You can listen to everything that they want to you to hear and you can read an interview with them where they tell you about their really quite phenomenal year that they've had so far. They've been a band for quite a long time but this year they released their second album and it shot straight to the top of the Norwegian charts and it, they've been gaining so much momentum ever since. So I 
w it would be great if you could come and join us at the show tomorrow because they are a sensational live band. And as I mentioned earlier, Alice Bowman is absolutely wonderful and unmissable. We have a Finnish artist called Suvi, who's currently living in Stockholm. She's going to be performing as well. And a really incredible new Norwegian artist called Araura Axnes, who's going to be coming and playing too. So if you're around tomorrow, this is part of First We Take Berlin. So if you have the wristband and everything, then please do come down and just see what, what the music that work, we are working so hard to promote is about in real life. Um, just one other little thing that I want to mention is the artwork that we use on the site. We work with them. Um, we use a lot of photography on the website because we want it to be a very kind of sleek and clean platform. We want the music to very much be at the hub of it, but we also want the people visiting the site to get a real sense of the area of the region, the countries that we're talking about and working with. Um, so what I'm, I'm going to do is I'm just going to ask if anybody has any questions and then I'm just going to put a little slideshow of some of the photographs that we've been using on the site up here so you can see who we've been working with and what the website looks like. So hopefully this is going to work. Let's see. Okay, great. So does anybody have any questions about the, uh, about the project so far? Or? Hi. I think you have to use this uh, microphone just here. Hi, um, sorry if I missed this at the beginning, but how is it all funded and what are your relationships like with um, Spotify and the other platforms that you're working with? Okay, well it's funded by uh, partly by the Nomex system, so I did mention very briefly earlier that we're owned by the music export offices of each of the Nordic countries. Um, and then we also have a lot of Nordic culture funding for this project as well. Um, we applied for that maybe two years ago, and the project's been in development ever since. Um, so that's the, m that's the money that we use to develop the website, to build the brand, and to really push it as far as we can out there. Um, and then the relationships that we have with the streaming services are incredibly open and incredibly good. They're very happy to have s people actively curating music on their website and encouraging people to visit them and use them. So we have really good open conversations with Spotify, for example, who will often feature us in their newsletters, will be on the discovery page. They're always helping us with best practice tips as well, so how to keep our users engaged, how to inform them of updated playlists, how we can best keep the communication open with them. Um, and the exact same thing goes for Deezer, and with WIMP we do the same thing too. Um, WIMP has a slightly different approach because it's a much more, they have a much more editorial kind of view of what they do. So they've been incredibly supportive in writing about the playlists that we've put out there and featuring the artists that we've had as curators. And um, yeah, just being very supportive because they, they're just happy to be having people really engaging with the services and using them in the best way that they possibly can. And, that was one of the main ideas of putting this project together, was how can we not only get people to discover new music, but how can we direct them to monetize streaming services where the artists will hopefully see some kind of financial benefit out of it eventually. Um, so, yeah, and we've actually, we're just in the sort of closing processes of putting together a deal with, or not necessarily a deal, but a partnership with Google Play as well. So we're very, we're very open to new partners. We just want all of this content to be available wherever our user base wants to find it. So there might come a day where we've got 10 streaming services on there, but as long as you can click and you can easily find the music, then we're absolutely happy. Okay, and just one quick question about the long term. Are you all envisaging that it will always be subsidized by public funding, or would you ever consider asking Spotify or Google to actually sponsor it? Well, this is a conversation that we're having at the moment because we've got funding for the next three years to develop it in the state that we have been doing. Um, so we're looking at what we could do afterwards, whether, it, whether it's going to be sustainable enough to turn it into a private company, whether we should look to the streaming services to become a featured part of what they do. So we're looking into a few different options. But we're in quite a fortunate position at the minute that we're still quite early on in the development, so we can 
track what's happening, we can see what kind of a direction it's going in and then we can make a better judge decision, perhaps this time next year, and start putting the steps in place for how it's going to run when we don't have the funding coming in. Thank you. Thank, thank you. <laughs> Hi. Um, I would love to know how you, you know, if you don't live in the Scandinavian area or Nordic area, you, you actually don't know which musician comes from where or not. How do you get the artists that are making the playlists to actually know which music is new and which they could put into their lists? Well, we leave it. We try and leave it as much up to our artists as we possibly can. So we don't necessarily say that they have to put new music in there. The only thing that we're, we try and be quite strict on is the, having the, the spread of the different countries. Um, but if somebody likes an old album and they feel really passionately about it and they want to include it, as long as it's available on the streaming services that we use, then they're completely welcome to, to put it in there. But what we quite often have is situations where artists don't feel as familiar with the music from some countries as they do from other countries. Um, so Nana from Of Monsters and Men, she's Icelandic and she felt very confident with Sweden and Denmark and Norway but she didn't feel, and Iceland obviously, but she didn't feel very confident in her knowledge of Finnish music so what we did is we put together loads of resources, we kind of made her some mixtapes and we said have a listen to these, see if there's anything that you like, if there's anything that you kind of like, let us know and we'll find other stuff along those lines. And she ended up discovering an artist called Miral Wagner through doing that, who's just released a new album through Sub Pop. And um, she absolutely fell in love with Miral Wagner. So it kind of worked as a bit of a discovery tool for her as well, which was fantastic because then she was so engaged with the playlist that she was presenting that she really strongly passed it on to her fans and she could genuinely stand behind it and say that she was very passionate about the music that she'd included in her playlist. So we can, we're there to give people a hand, but we try very hard to not curate the curators, to let them rely on their own musical knowledge and then whatever we can help out with in any other way we, we do. This was what I meant when somebody is not knowing the music of a special area, that's how you do it to let them know what's... But then you try to put together like some playlists that yeah. they... Yeah, so we've got some of our own kind of hidden playlists that we'll send over to the curator if they're for example we've got this big playlist of about 150 Finnish artists so they can just go through have a listen if they like something that they hear they can explore the artist further and see uh, see what they think but we also um, within the region that we cover are the Faroe Islands Orland and Greenland too and a lot of people are a lot less familiar with music from those countries so We've, we've been working quite hard to make sure that we've got some of the best new music coming out of their countries on, visible on the playlist. So we'll put them in the pick and mix section and things like that. We've had two Faroese curators so far as well, which has been really useful for just getting some Faroese music onto the homepage and sharing it. I think we've, we've only had one artist from Greenland so far, but we're working on getting more of them on there. Um, but yeah, I think it's, it's kind of, it's important from an editorial aspect that we make sure that the people that are curating are avid music, music fans. So they're already quite engaged with the Nordic scene. They already know a lot of the artists that are active and working. Um, yeah, and then the, we, include, we include things like Faroese curators too, just to make sure that things that we perhaps might have passed us by are still making their way out there and you know, we can put as much as, as many resources as we put behind Swedish artists, for example, behind them as well, to make sure everyone's getting a fair listen and a fair go. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. How do you actually pick the curators, the, the musicians? How do you find them? And yeah. Well, we kind of had a bit of a dream list before we started. So Ellen Oya, who we had on there um, last week, was 
pretty much number one on my list to get on there. So we have artists that we really love and admire um, who have who are really big music fans themselves as well. So that's that's the first thing that we look for is people that kind of go into their own Facebook page and post videos of songs that they like and things. People that actively want to share their, mu their favorite music anyway. So that's step one. The second thing that we try very hard to consider is the promotional activities of the curating artists as well. So if they are, for example, Reptile Youth that we have on there this week are releasing a new video this week. So it's a really good push for them before they put their new content out into the world. And then we can talk about that in the interview. We've done this with them um, albums as well. So we've, we had the Ravenettes curate a playlist, for example. They released a surprise album, maybe a month or two ago. I can't quite remember when it was, but they decided to not tell anybody that they were going to put an album out. They just got in touch with a few specific people. So they curated a Nordic playlist, and I think they did a Guardian interview, and they did a few other key bits. And then we just rolled it out. As soon as that album came live, we just switched the playlist on, and everybody could discover it that way, find out all about the new album, how they've made the new album. We always include links so that you can download the, uh, the curating artist's album and things like that as well. Um, but yeah, we, so the promotional activities of each of the artists and, I, and then just the people that have the time to do it as well. It's not a very time consuming process, but it, it is what you make of it. So um, Nana from Of Monsters and Men, for example, she, she spent a whole week painting her house and listening to Finnish bands to make sure that she could find something for it. So it just depends how involved the curators want to get. But because we're working with such avid music fans, then people do tend to invest quite a lot of themselves in it. And yeah. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. And maybe just one more question. Where are you located? We're actually located in London. Um, but we, as we're owned by the five export offices, we have desks in each of the different countries that we can go and work for. So we travel a lot. We make sure that we're in touch with artists, labels, everybody in all of the different countries on a face-to-face -face basis as well as just by email. Um, but the Nordic playlist is actually located in the very neutral <laughs> territory of London. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> so <clears throat> the main the main yeah? yeah, yeah, yeah. I can hear you fine. The main aspect, uh, I think, is to sell music from the Nordic countries to the rest of Europe. But there are a lot of, especially Swedish bands, who have contracts with jam labels. At least there are now three jam labels with six artists. Mm -hmm. So can and if, how can these labels use this as a promotional tool for the Nordic bands? Um, well, I think it's because we're doing it on an artist basis rather than a label basis, then it doesn't really make much of a difference. If um, What's a good example of a Swedish artist on a German label? A yeah, okay. So, yeah, well, I mean, as long as, as long as the music's available on streaming services, sometimes we have some issues with territorial rights and where tracks are available. Um, but as long as they're available, then we can promote it everywhere. So the website is available everywhere. It's available in each country that the streaming services are available in. We've just been promoting it in certain countries so far just to make sure that we can do a solid job and make sure that we're present. But if it's territorial rights that is kind of the basis of your question there? No, no, just uh, it's, it, it, it doesn't seem the attention to promote stuff not uh, not for export for the five export services so they pay for that they pay for for the whole project i see yeah so if you pr you're promoting products from other labels the people who pays for it doesn't have anything well it's i mean it's quite a complicated answer to that question in that case because it's not necessarily label money that we're working on at all the companies are some depends on each country 
um, it depends on each expo office. Some of them are fully privately owned, some of them are privately and semi-publicly funded. Mm -hmm. But it's not label money that we're working with. So um, we don't have any obligation to any particular artist or label to represent okay. them over anybody okay. else. Okay. Which is a great position to be yeah. in because we can just promote whatever is put in front of us. We can promote um, an artist from 20 years ago that nobody's been paying attention to for 20 years or we can promote something brand new and completely unheard of without having to kind of answer to anybody about it. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Hello. Oh, sorry. Hello, Jasper from Export Music Sweden. Here, uh, I don't. Have, it's not really a question. It's just uh, uh, one thing to add. Francine is a bit humble uh, when it comes to Spotify. They many services want to get in and have cooperations with them. But at least in the past, it was really, really hard, and they really embraced this. So I think it's that's a really good kind of quality stamp for for the Nordic playlists. It's been going on for a while. And, yeah. And the others are. Deezer and Wimp, right? Yeah. 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 So we're having conversations with a couple of other services at the minute, but we we just wanted to make sure that we launched the, the site really strongly. So we wanted to make sure that we could develop something that the streaming services found really interesting and really useful. And I think we've now proven that we can do that. So we've got a lot of other streaming services that are really keen to get the content too. Um, we'll absolutely filter it through to them, but we are working quite strongly on the relationship that we have with Spotify, for example, um, with advertising within Spotify, with making sure that our traffic is directed properly around their service and that we are sending a good amount of people to each of these services. Um, but yeah, they've been fantastically supportive so far, which is great. We'll do everything we can to keep making nice content that they'll hopefully continue to promote in the future. So, yeah. I think there was just one over here. Sorry. I was just wondering how you get on the 150 list to get listened to from another artist. Oh, so, okay, I see yeah. what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> I don't play music, but I have a lot of friends from different European countries, yeah. like Scandinavian countries. How do you make it onto that list if somebody says, I don't know Finnish music? Yeah, well, I mean, that's not an exclusive list at all. You just have to send me an email and say, we're from Finland. Okay. Here's a link. <laughs> so you just, you can just send your music. Yeah, absolutely. And add it to the list. Yeah, okay. precise. That's exactly how it works. Um, we don't, as I, as I mentioned earlier, we don't try and curate the curators. So if it's, mm -mm. it can be whatever genre, it can be anything that we like, but we'll, we'll put it onto this list and then we, we're trying to make this catalog type thing as well, where we kind of put a bit of a genre next to it, mm -hmm. but it just keeps causing loads of arguments in the office about what fits into <laughs> what genre. So we're kind of giving up on that, but, um, uh, yeah, I think I'll just mention quite quickly where we discover a lot of the newer bands that we put on there as well. There's another project that I work on called Ya Ya Ya, um, which is more of a live project that's been running in London for the last five years. So we have three new bands from the Nordic region come and play in London every month. Um, it's very much an export project, so um, it's all <laughs> artists that are looking to come and work in other countries and to leave their own country and make a name elsewhere. And so we, I'm, for the last five years, we've been in touch with a huge amount of managers and labels and artists. So we find a lot of very new, exceptional quality music that way. Um, and we've also developed quite a name for the Ya 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 brand as well. So we've got a really great blog that runs around it too. And we have a lot of artists that will just submit things directly to Ya Ya Ya. So if it comes into the yeah, yeah, yeah inbox, it's instantly considered for Nordic playlist as well. So, yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Just one other question about the partnership with Spotify. So mm -hmm. are they effectively giving you a lot of in-kind support in the way that they're helping you with advertising, with 
you know, how to develop your platforms better? Or are you actually paying them for a service? We're not paying them, no. It's very much, um, it's very much kind of, well, we pay for adverts on Spotify. So if you go into Spotify this week, if you're not a premium member, then you might well see a Reptile Youth banner pop up, encouraging you to go and listen to their playlist. Um, but other than that, everything that we do is just on a kind of, on a good, yeah, it's on a pro bono basis completely. It's, it's very much us actively using their service and them enjoying the traffic that we're generating, basically, if it comes down to it. But also just having um, ready-made content that they can share with their own users as well. So, I mean, a Nordic playlist curated by Licky Lee is something that's going to interest a huge amount of people. And so if they, could, if they put that into their newsletter, then that's one less playlist that they have to make that week, you know. Yeah. So it's that, it's, that kind of, it's that kind of thing, but it's very much a media partnership that we have rather than a monetary partnership. Yeah. Are there any more questions at all? Or no? Okay, well, thank you all very much for coming. Over lunch time means a lot. Um, <laughs> thank you. And if anybody's got any questions, I'll just be wandering around. And please do come and see all the bands tomorrow night at the show because they are all exceptional. So, hope to see you there. Thank you very much. <laughs>